Good morning, everyone. So yeah, we use um, a housing software called ASAP. Um, well, first of all, I'll introduce myself. I'm Sheila Kelly. I'm the housing manager for Nigaming First Nation. I've been there for 14 years. And we just recently bought housing database software um, to keep track of our, our program. Uh, and my housing assistant is Winter Kopanas, but she couldn't be here um, at this time. She has three little ones at home, so she stayed home. Oh. Yes. So in Onigaming, uh, we have uh, 814 members and 473 of them live on reserve. And we have a total of 134 houses uh, in Enigaming. Um, 42 of them are CMHC units, and the rest are band owned units. And there's a map of the community. And this is the software, and there's just various tabs on the side and going across. Um, it's the first step when you get the software is uh, inputting all the data, which takes a lot of time. Um, so you do need an assistant because as housing managers, you know, we're all busy um, putting out fires daily and you don't really have time to sit and do this. So it's nice to have an assistant inputting the data. Um, so, um, stuff it can do, it, uh, it makes work orders. Um, you can, uh, you can um, install a mobile app on, a app on a tablet and you can take it to your work site and take pictures and you can send the pictures directly to the, um, to the software, to the correct um, home. Um, uh, so yeah, it's helpful with um, inspections, work orders. Um, you, you don't need to do everything from the office. You could take it, take the tablet with you to your various locations. Um, and it uh, integrates with Google Map, um, which is a really helpful tool because sometimes on applications they even ask you for GPS coordinates. So that gives you the coordinates of your um, of your sites. Um, <clears throat> Um, and it also keeps track of your renovations. When people write in letters, um, you can put it in their file and you can mark uh, whether or not um, you're gonna do it in one month or two months or if it's something urgent you need to do right away, you can mark, mark it as urgent. And it also, you can input uh, budgets to your various housing projects and keep track that way. Um, uh, also, uh, when you start a new construction project, you have the starting budget and it, uh, it'll keep track of all your expenses and um, what you're spending on your various vendors and um, your labor costs. Uh, <clears throat> And then when it comes to rent, it keeps track of the rent as well. Um, if there's people that are not paying rent, then it'll prompt you to um, maybe send them a notice. <clears throat> um, so you can be able to print out invoices, receipts, um, arrears and receivable reports. Um, Yeah, and you can scan an email, you can attach invoices and forms directly from the program and send them out to um, where they need to go. Um, and it also can also, it can also link up to your accounting system, but we don't uh, have that we haven't done that yet in our community, so we just uh, use it basically for our, um, just for our housing program, but we are looking into linking it to our, um, our accounts uh, program. 
Um, yeah, so it's a really hand, handy tool um, when you have the time to work with it. So like I say, you do need an assistant to help you, um, to help you input all the data and print out the reports that you need. And this is just how the, how the desktop looks. It has the various tabs and um, all the things you can do there. It's uh, really user friendly and um, is uh, Ferris Computers and they're really helpful anytime you have a question um, you just call them and they're willing to help you with anything um, yeah so um, that's basically what it does it, it's compatible with the Apple Android Windows devices fills out inspections you can take pictures and store it right to the correct file um, and you can use Google Map for the GPS coordinates, create work orders. Um, yeah, you have any questions? Uh, they do offer training, but um, I haven't been to the training yet, but they also do um, online um, telephone training. Yeah, so, and they do offer training at their site, which is in Saskatoon. Um, I just have, I haven't been yet, so, um, so it's a good program. How long did it take your system to put all the information in this program? Uh, it's an ongoing process, so it's really, it takes a long time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which uh, assessment or like grant? No, in my community, we're starting to put up a walk-in shower. Yeah. Shower stalls. It'd be easier for the, like me, for for instance, can hardly lift my legs to get into the bathtub, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, we started, we got two places over there with that we put up. I put one up there a couple, two or three years ago. Kind of little fun putting those up three sections there. One of, some of them are coming and sold in one piece. Yep. They got the chair in the corner, a huh? bench sort of thing. That's what we're trying to do. I don't know if you guys are into that or what. That's my question. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, in our community, uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Uh um, so you're talking about adapting the bathrooms for elderly people and dis disabled, yeah, so yeah, we do do that. And it's a big job, you have to um, take out walls, take out doorways, so it's not something easy to do. But, yeah. We have another question in the back. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, Scott is Mullen, I'm the housing manager for Long Lake 58. Uh, I know our data, we have a database uh, through uh, Matawa. Um, I know it's, um, I, I think the CRW is what it's called. And uh, we just really started um, um, uh, compiling information in there and getting stuff in there. And I know um, that it's going to be up for renewal again, apparently uh, this year. So um, I don't know if you guys have your own separate uh, database that you guys have somewhere and your own personal or something, or how we can, if this um, CRW gets um, canceled for some reason or it costs us a lot of money, I don't know how we'd be able to, um, to have our own to afford it or to have it. So mm -hmm. that's a question I'd like to find out. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too sure about that, but... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, we pay an annual um, service fee too to this company. So um, if there's any upgrades to the modules at all, um, that's included in the cost. And also um, anytime we need any type of training. Yeah, so that's what we have. Okay, uh, thank you, Sheila. So we'll just move along with the next presenter.
Uh, hold on here. So if you have any more questions later on after we do the presentations, then we'll get the presentations here. Oh, and the other thing too, um, that Sheila, she's got a, a sign-up sheet for um, the, the computer company that she had and they're, they're dealing with. So we have Pauline from Laxol First Nation, and I'll hand these out for you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Pauline Laxul, and I've lived in Laxul all my life. When I meet new people, I always say, I'm Pauline Laxul from Laxul, and I'm the queen of Laxul. <laughs> Just something to kind of break the ice. <clears throat> so I have uh, four children, all girls. They have their own families. and try to support them any way I can. And I have, I started working back in 1996, starting with the, starting in finance. I was there for 17 years, I believe, before I, before I went into housing. <clears throat> and, um, I realized that I like working with housing, and besides, I got to work with uh, numbers. So it is good. So as a keynote housing, I'm the director of housing. Uh, keynote housing is comprised of three communities, Frenchman said, Kijik Bay, Whitefish Bay, and we manage 161 rental units under Section 95 of Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. And we have a nineplex through INAC and a 24 unit through INAC and Timber Claim. So our capital, director of capital works <coughs> is the one that handles all these uh, CMHC loans and everything. Gets the thing going. <laughs> Gets the thing going. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> the loans are insured through approved lenders, INAC, Laxo First Nation. CMHC provides subsidy assistance with a period of time for construction an operation of the units. Sometimes it's not enough to cover all costs, which is why rent is charged on these units. Collecting rent is an ongoing issue within Laksu. The other issues at hand, Kinut is working on strategies to collect rent, which includes legal options, but that is usually the last resort. We also work with our IT team for tenants that are not paying rent, the IT team disables their internet services until tenants start paying rent with an agreement that is set up. And then their internet will be turned back on if they start paying rent consistently. Kinuent uses a CRW program to record data and rent collected. And it shows who is in arrears. We also enter uh, print out purchase orders and work orders. We also use Excel to record our rent and rent arrears <clears throat> because uh, <laughs> one time uh, a couple years ago CRW crashed and so we had to re-enter all the the data back in. And it takes a lot of time too, especially with the amount of tenants and units that we have. 
So Kinawan gives copies of rent receipts and our tenant files along with signed leases, letters written to tenants. We collect rent through online banking, Ontario Works, UDSB, payroll, and we also have a debit machine in our office. Rent is, is collected for elders by going to their residence. And we have our finance staff in a different building who do our fin finances for accounts payable, payroll, bank rents, and one who solely works with uh, 16 CMHC programs, entering rent and other data from Kinuant, cited the books. All original documents are scanned now and for audit purposes and held by our finance department. <clears throat> We also have a tablet that we use to do for housing assessment and to take pictures. <clears throat> and we have G GPS coordinates for each unit. There has been 10 and 5 units that have opened the last 12 months for new tenants. The Kinuan board goes through the housing applications. They screen future tenants and use the point system for tenancy. The future tenants who have the highest points will get new housing. We also started a beautification yard contest with the three communities for Kinawind and Band Housing. Anyone that wants to enter this contest can sign up. So far it has been successful and people are happy with it. We have Public Works who donates a lawn more for third place. Home Hardware donates a barbecue and Kinawind Housing donates first prize of 500 for, to each community. And we also talked with a garden enthusiast <clears throat> who will be helping with people for vegetable and flower gardens in their yards. Whoever wants them can sign up once we put a poster out. We also support community events and one being our Lax Office Derby, which is every year. We had a draw for 15 tickets, five for each community, for tenants who have their rent paid up to date. So we use this as an incentive for tenants to pay their rent. We have a staff of eight, three being in office, five out in the field. We have a director of housing, housing clerk, and office administrator. Our maintenance staff consists of five. One is a plumber, one is an electrician, <clears throat> and the other three are maintenance workers but they all do maintenance regardless. We get calls from tenants with leaks or something broke in their unit. Our office admin will make a work order in our CRW program and, that, and will then assign a job to whoever it calls for, <clears throat> whether it be electrician, plumber, or maintenance. The crew will go and expect what it's needed and our office admin will order supplies through home, hardware, or Rashtagon. Future plans for staff include training for maintenance, plumbing, electrical, to enhance their skill set. As an incentive for Kinoan staff who have a who has a birthday, we'll have a luncheon in town. We also have a yearly tenant appreciation barbecue for each community every year. And. Uh, <clears throat> Laxol is working towards developing a unique program amalgamation of Kinuant housing and band housing. It will be created by the community of Laxo with two mandates. Right now it is in the early stages. And right now <clears throat> there are two five units being built in Kijik Bay and Whitefish Bay and they should be done by May. These five plex units will be used for elders and the handicapped who need home care. So Keenwood Housing is very busy with all that comes our way. We try to help build a strong relationship with our tenants and with our staff too. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Any questions for Lor Lorraine? No, is it Lorraine? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Pauline. <laughs> Oh, 
Where does the funds come to pay for all the maintenance workers and the staff that you got in your housing program? That comes from the rent that comes in, okay. and we follow a budget each year. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question. You have a hardware store nearby at the band. Sometimes uh, my uh, community, where I'm from, it's sometimes it takes what two or three weeks when they order something like wall coverage, base coverage, or sort of things like that. But the plumbing, um, I work as a maintenance at my band. But I stock up on things like a plum plumbing uh, material or like a PEX or whatever, what have you. So I have it on my hand if something goes wrong, like a sump pump. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys do something like that or have a hardware store close by to get things like like that. Yeah, we're we're lucky because we live right by Sulcote and uh, Dryden. So. <clears throat> We um, order our supplies from home hardware and Oshtegon for fridge and stoves and dry then we go to Timber Max for our cabinets, countertops, and sometimes our electrician will go to Dryden to to get much needed uh you go when what he's short of it that he can't get in silk out. So it's to Sulcote, it's about 40 minute drive, and to Dryden's about an hour and a half. So we're lucky that they're close by. But we do order lots of supplies for things that we need most, say like doorknobs. Um, A lot of doors. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of these uh, databases with CRW and ASAP, they, um, there's a tab there that you can put in your vendors. So if they're like an hour away or 10 minutes away, so they'll, you can input everything through there with their addresses and yep. their billing. <laughs> Is there any more <clears throat> questions? Bujo, um, you have a housing policy, right? Yeah, we do. Of course, you do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you when you just mentioned uh, thought of doorknobs and so in your housing policy, when uh, it's self-inflicted, when you when they break a window or something, how do you go about that? Do uh, do you repair it and send them the bill or? Well, in the past, it was usually just repaired, but uh, <clears throat> I went to, we went to Garden River this past summer and I had asked them about what they do when uh, tenants break uh, or self-inflicted uh, or damages in their units caused by them. They said they, they, fix, they fix whatever was broken and they invoice the tenant. So that's what we are starting to do too now. And even uh, say like if uh, somebody drunk breaks uh, something and is charged, we also will call the police on that because uh, you know he's got no business breaking somebody else's unit, you know. And and we did have one, and he's getting a he's got a court order to pay us pay Kinuin back that for the door and door frame that he broke. So it's all working hand in hand. Even with this, uh, the database and all, sorry, um, if like for the damages and whatnot, it'll capture all that and you can input all that, the, the, the damages that's on the house or the doors or the windows. And if you want a report from there, then it'll capture it and you can print it out. 
with even, the ASAP and CRW. Yeah, even when we, um, when the guys empty out a septic tank, we record it in the CRW system and tells you when was the last time it was emptied out and so it's all handy, the CRW. With uh, some of your uh, renovations that are uh, self-inflicted and the police are involved, um, how many uh, of those apply to making, having to make an application to your insurance company? Uh, we don't uh, use insurance company. We haven't uh, dealt with insurance other than a uh, house that burnt down. We have uh, we have insurance on every unit, <clears throat> but uh, w wouldn't that be an avenue? Um, because uh, if you're trying to uh, make the tenant accountable and it's self-inflicted and somebody's charged, mm -hmm. there's an incident report. We we would file that to our insurance to, to have those costs covered, because in some cases. Um, uh, police are having to go in and deal with a, a domestic and they have to do a forced entry. Yeah. They give us a, an incident report so we can file that to our insurance company. Um, that's just something that we're explore, exploring and I was just wondering if, if, that's, if that's something you had to experience in, in your situation. Uh, no, we haven't gone that far yet. We haven't explored it yet. But we did have an incident a few weeks ago with the police having to <clears throat> break, in, break down a door. So we had a board meeting too and I had asked the board what, what we can do. And they said to invoice the tenant that, that caused this damage to happen. But uh, I think I will talk to the board about Asking about the insurance, see if the insurance gonna pay for it or whatever. See with the database too, it'll show the accountability portion of it of a, the tenant, and so with those kind of reports that you can bring out into your housing policies to your housing board, and so it'll be good to have a database to show all that reporting. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Morning. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, tenants that are under Ontario Works, and uh, sometimes the damage is to the to the exterior doors or windows, mm -hmm. and these have to be fixed regardless. Uh, how do you recover the cost? You know when that happens, and who do you recover it from? Uh, we have tenants that are on, uh, are on at Ontario Works, and we usually get their shelter dollars, so that would cover for the damages. Yeah, does the Ontario Works uh, cover the damages? Is that what you're saying? No, we get the shelter dollars. Yeah. And this, that would be used to help pay for damages. Yeah, but uh, what what I'm thinking is uh, I think they need to be responsible for for the damages that that they do to their to their buildings. Mm -hmm. And how do we go about making them responsible without having somebody else take care of it? Yeah, that's a gray area because they get monies from the government and they don't have a job, so how will they, how are they able to pay for it, you know? Like OW tells us that we can uh, invoice them for doors and 
whatever is damaged. Yeah, that's one thing too. With each of the First Nations, they have their own housing policy, so every housing policy is different. So that's what we gotta start looking at too. And it's good that you're bringing this, the issues and sharing the issues and the differences with each of the First Nations. Mm -hmm. I have another question here. Yeah, I, uh, I'll just uh, <clears throat> probably more of um, in regards to um, insurances and. Uh, also, um, policies uh, policies dictate of how we deal with uh, tenants. Mm -hmm. I know it, that's probably how it is in yours, and that's how it is in ours, especially yeah. when dam uh, damage is caused by tenants or whatever. Mm -hmm. Policies is what uh, fines or whatever, that sort of thing. And I, we're starting to do the same thing as well. Yeah. Uh, insurances, we try not to uh, go through insurances if we don't have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd rather not if you don't have to because of the premiums and how insurance is charged and whatever. Oh, yeah. The only time you want to do that is a fire and stuff like that and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> So that's basically how we uh, run it. Um, I, I understand you You guys have a board, board of yeah. directors. Yeah. Um, I don't know how different it is from um, um, committees. I have uh, committees in our, in our community, which mm -hmm. is based on our community members. So we basically have our policies, and that, that's how we um, um, deal with um, a lot of um, <clears throat> um, incidents where OW clients, especially, where you know they're doing um, damage to whatever yeah. tenants, that sort of thing. So we yeah. we deal with them within our policies, rather through fines or whatever, or our find ways of, with the OW, and we we work together with OW and whatever, mm -hmm. try to get things worked out. Mm -hmm. So most of the time we try to, I'm sure it's like that in your first station, so, which is good. I mean, we're on the right path in regards to uh, um, tenant uh, yeah. relations with our community, so I appreciate what you're, what you're doing. Thanks. All right, thank you. So um, speaking of the Paul housing policies, housing directors or housing board and OW, uh, and then it's good to let um, these uh, databases, you can capture all of that, or whichever database you're using, you can ask for customizing your own stuff and inputting into there. Yeah. That's how I see it. Is there any more questions before we move on to the next presenter? Uh, do you have limits on um, when people damage their homes? Uh, no. No, you just keep repairing, repairing? Yeah. Because if we don't, uh, Chief and Council will come after us. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Um, it's in regarding the selection process of tenancy. Yeah. Um, the point system. I like. I'm not sure about how how you guys came up with that, and also how long was you guys used that, and the outcome from members. Um, we have a huge. We have a lot of applications for housing from our members. Um, last count was 128, I believe. We have 38 single people, couples, that really need housing. And we have families, sometimes single mothers with four, five kids, and, and families of same married couples with lots of kids and uh, it goes by, I guess, yeah, by the point system. We have a, a, the point system consists of uh, how much people are in a home, how much there is in a family, and whether it's overcrowded and whether the, there's any sick kids or sick and then you go who's sick. And 
how long they've been living together in the, in the crowded unit, and how long their application's been on file. So whoever has the highest points once all the all the points have been tallied, uh, they would be the ones to get the housing. But the one thing that we don't look at right is uh, and I want to get in on the housing proposal for CMHC because all they've been doing these past few years is building three bedroom units, 10 of them, five of them. I think we need to look at the, you know, like the single people, single or couples and whether we need two bedrooms, three bedrooms or four bedrooms and one and with the basements, you know, like we have built crawl spaces. That's not good for anybody, you know. It's just an empty space that needs, you know. And yeah, it's such a waste, I guess. And I want to get involved with that with our director of capital works. Get more input into the housing that that needs to be that needs to be uh, made, I guess, you know, built. That is uh, for everybody on the res. Everybody matters. Even the uh, handicapped elders gay now. Okay. Uh, we'll take one more last question here and then we'll move on to the next presenter. I, uh, I, I know what you are, our database as well. We, could, we, um, we take, um, we, 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 um, we, we keep a lot of information in regards to uh, our tenants. Uh, yeah. We have individual um, homes. And um, I know she was mentioning earlier in regards to uh, <clears throat> tenants that do, you know, neglect and whatever that don't uh, treat their um, uh, places, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with respect and whatever and that sort of thing. So we, like in our policy, we have a one, two, three strike system, <laughs> believe it or not, where, you know, at some point in time, there's got to be some consequences to our tenants to where, to where they're not looking after their units. Because our responsibilities as housing managers in the band, we look after the best interests of the homes, mm -hmm. you know, and we take care of the children, that sort of thing. So that's what we, and uh, the th one three, it doesn't mean like we're gonna kick them out after three strikes. It, it, it just means that we're gonna let, make them aware that, hey, you guys cannot c continue to do what you're doing in these homes. So we, so it, and we end up, end up taking points away depending on how they, you know, they treat the house. So I mean, yeah. at some point in time, you can't just say, uh, we gotta keep, we'll keep fixing your place, don't worry about it, mm -hmm. you know, like, at some point in time, that cycle has to, you know, stop, has to yeah. stop and then and say enough is enough, you know, yeah. so. But anyways. Yeah, we started um, <clears throat> having workshops with uh, IFNA last spring, and we had them in our three communities. That's just to, like a workshop maintenance, like for our tenants to come in and, uh, and we want to show them uh, minor maintenance, HRVs and stuff like that. And we've had them six times already <laughs> within the last year in the daytime and evening because people complain that uh, they can't come during the day because they're working. So we have it in the evening and still hardly anybody shows up, you know, but we're going to keep on doing it every year. So hopefully try to tell them how to keep, look after their house, you know, like, especially so mold doesn't uh, build up from all the leaks that happen and whatnot. So it's a struggle out there, but we're trying, you know, like, and we have our, we do the incentives every time we have a workshop, you know, like with a meal and draws and Timmy's, <laughs> yeah, so we are trying. <laughs> oh, miigwech, Pauline. Um,
Can we hold your question? So can we move on to the next one and then we'll... No, we're going to gather them up after and you guys can ask the questions all together. <laughs> oh, one more. <laughs> Um, how do you go about uh, choosing your uh, your material for your housing? Is it is it up to you, like the quality of your material? Are the the contractors responsible for that? Why I'm asking is I I just started in the housing program. I'm the housing manager, and I'm just learning. Yeah. What I've seen is the contractors, like they want to make profit, right? Mm -hmm. And they send us uh, poor quality material. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how does your housing program get around that? Are you involved in the choosing the quality of your housing materials? Um, we have a uh, director of capital works that, of oh, capital. <laughs> that works with our contractor from Home Hardware that does the housing. So he's the one that works with him to in the development stages of the of the housing as it's being built up. So you're happy with the choice they made then, so Yeah, yeah. And for our maintenance crew, we usually have Dallas and Jerry orders his own electrical supplies, and Dallas does his own orders his own plumbing supplies. And the maintenance guys, they know what to. They've been working in housing for a long, long time, and they order what they think is good for to use. Yeah, so we use uh, good good material. Yeah. That's the thing too with the database, you can capture the products of uh, the lumber and whatnot, and an estimation, the, the, yeah, it's if you start using that and then it'll show you and print out the reports as to what your, the cost of the lumber, the, the I don't know, the, how long it's going to last and so mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to move along with the next presenter. You go ahead, Pauline. All right, thank you. So we have Curtis Madison from North Kamigwanek First Nation. And the podium is yours. How are we for time? I might go on for an hour. <laughs> Oh, bonjour. My name is Curtis Medicine. I'm from Whitefish Bay, Newt Kmigwaning. I'm here to uh, present for the housing assessment, how we, how we use our housing assessment, assessment. So welcome. Glad that you guys all came in. This slider. Okay, we're gonna begin here. So an introduction to our, what I'll be presenting is the CRW system, what its uh, capabilities are, the housing administration, what types of reports, decisions, and options, how we uh, go about that, advantages and disadvantages of the CRW program, and future housing development, which is in another location of our community. And that'll be discussed, but it's not an ongoing uh, decision to be made here. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So the CRW system. What is a CRW system? It is a two-in-one function database and software. It's designed for rental units, buildings, any structure that you have in the community has the capability of control, 
housing revenues and expenses, can develop work orders, purchase orders, and rent payments, and anything related to those. And why we use the CRW system helps us determine housing shortages and populations, helps us understand overcrowding issues, uh, application reports, very useful for uh, leadership level, government level, any uh, funding agencies. Uh, housing assessment helps us determine what materials are in the building, how long they've been there, any repairs that have been done, all of that good stuff. Community mapping, that is a very interesting topic and I'll discuss that further later on as we go along. Housing administration. Reports, application, and decisions. So under the reports and applications, we're able to design a work order, whether it's been called in by a housing tenant or if it has been uh, brought up in a move in inspection report that something needs to be done, has that capability of determining whether it's a high urgent nature or not very, um, not very important. Purchase orders and payments. Payment system, we can determine who's in arrears, what hasn't been done on the assistant level, like uh, creating invoices to process a payment Otherwise, those tenants will be sitting in a credit um, and process receivables reports that'll help help an assistant go through the database quicker. Home inspections, renovation reports, overcrowding reports, those are some of the capabilities. There are a ton of features on this program uh, we also do, helps us with application of Section 95 housing, RRAP applications, and banned own homes. Another component that was uh, brought up when I was talking to our housing manager is that we need to input the Jordan's principal application in our system as we do have a lot of children that are in the homes. We can utilize the application by knowing how old the child is, how many kids are in the house, and it, it becomes a concern to, to our housing department because there's incidents where mold can develop, how severe the mold is, or any, any conditions of the house. Year-end reporting, um, when revenues come in for new building structures or renovations, we can utilize this system and help us develop a report of how much revenues our system is still holding, uh, what's been done. In the decisions, market value, versus rent amount. We can input market value of a home into our system and it helps us generate a rent amount, what we expect to receive. It also helps us determine our tenant application process. We can input any applications that come in when we make a call out to the community members saying, here's our application for unit A, B, C, D, then they would uh, fill in their application and we would input the data, whether they're an OW client or working, first, work, working for the First Nation or working off community, um, number of children that they have, the urgency of their, of their situation for a home. Renovation replacement items. We can ask our housing manager 
to pull out reports from the system that will give us a little brief detail of the home. Let us know when the last time a window has been renovated or installed, if the window has been used to its maximum life, that would be a good uh, determinant of getting that window replaced. Um, any damages that were done, we can include reports into the system. New unit locations. New unit locations in the system, we can utilize mapping software. It has a ton of features of mapping software, similar to GIS applications, if you guys are familiar with that program. Uh, dev developers have included so many icons that we can attach to, it, attach to a map. Our map is powered by Google and Bing. The quality of the mapping is incredible. Uh, we can input, input exact location coordinates to help us uh, determine a unit where a unit location is possible to develop. So the advantages and disadvantage of CRW program, I'll explain the advantages. Helps us determine the future development areas. Whether, uh, whether there's a issue with an area, we won't touch that area due to the area being ceremonial grounds has burial sites in the area, any of them, or, um, or somebody's lot, like a CP lot certificate of possession. So the, that, that advantage of that future development area, we have that capability of inputting the exact GPS location and creating a boundary line or property line then we can like put a icon in there that's saying do not build or something similar to that. So the advantages we can uh, determine the needs of homes, again, renovations, um, quality of the house, uh, living standards for children, and our tracking system. We can track whatever we want in the system. Um, depending on how much information the tenant will provide to us. And not only the tenant, but our uh, funding agencies, uh, RRAP applications, we can track all those applications. Track uh, financial expenses and revenues, how much we spent on a home within five years. We can pull out report um, in any time frame, one year, two years, five years, 10 years. Uh, same thing with the revenues, we can do all that um, financial stuff that the capability has. It has like a built-in built in accounting software that's very easy to use, input the system and expenses, input, the sy in input costs and revenues, I mean input costs and expenses and input any income and revenues. The disadvantages. We had an issue of program freeze up. We had to restart. We rectified that situation um, just recently, a couple weeks ago. We had an uh, issue of a file becoming very large that it, it's like so large in pixels. This is how big it's going to be in, if you print it out but we only need like a little image just to see the imagery of what uh, we, we took a picture of and input it into the system. Mapping file upload. We rectified that situation also for certificate of possession lands. It's a uh, KMZ file with Natural Resources Canada. We couldn't actually uh, get the, the file in but it does have a capability and 
we do stay in contact with our developer and the program, let them know what we want and what we could utilize into the program, give them feedback. So the good thing, or the good side of uh, knowing where a CP lot is, we can go click into that Natural Resources Canada, select an area, provides coordinates, exact GPS coordinates that we can input into our system, make things a lot easier instead of guessing the boundary lines. So the future of our housing development. So if you can see the future of developments area, you can see where our developed area is in the Utamiguan in 32A, where the arrow is pointing down. Then the undeveloped area, that is about 20 minutes, excuse me, about 20 minutes around high, Highway 11, I believe, or 17. So the arrow pointing to your left, that area is uh, Berry Creek, undeveloped area. We've already made roads and road access in there. But it's going to cost us millions, maybe billions, to develop sewer lines, power lines, water lines. So that's another uh, area where we could possibly develop. And our community still has a certificate of possession lands. I think we're one of the, one of the few in Treaty Land with the, in Treaty 3 territory that has a certificate of possession lots. So in conclusion, overall, the quality of the housing system is incredible with endless utilization. The capabilities and functions of the administration is very helpful to understand what the reporting and application process is. Without continuous discussion and contact with the program designers, we would not be able to provide our feedback and provide improvements. The future of housing development holds many opportunities we continue to strive for ongoing developments. Miigwech. Uh, Miigwech, Curtis. Is there any questions for Curtis Medicine? Can you share your report? I mean, your presentation? Can you email me your presentation? Yeah, I can uh, get a list here. Pass okay. around my. Um, pass around my. Um, okay, my question is uh, <coughs> Jordan's principal application. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, the Jordan principal program I'm aware of is for children from newborn to 18 that have disabilities. Yeah. So is this a different application? It will be. Um, I'm not I, familiar with the application processes. I only know of uh, this one application where there's like a arts stream, a land-based stream, and a uh, might be a science stream. Because when Those you are, said living standards for children, what do you mean by that? That's what I thought you meant. If there's a child with a disability, uh, living is that what you meant? Living standards for a child would be the quality of the home. Like a child shouldn't be living in a, in a um, almost near condemned building or um, moldy home, et cetera. Oh. Um, probably in that area for Jordan's principal where you can apply if the child has a disability and if they need a ramp, Jordan's principal can pay for the ramp or if there's any minor accessibility for the child, like the bathroom area, Jordan principal could, I would say, might possibly pay for it. Yeah. There is a different application for Jordan's principal 
So you'd have to go through them where you, if you apply for Jordan's principle through the First Nation, and then they go to, and then it'll go towards Jordan's principle people. So it'll be up to them if it's going to be approved or not. No, if there's a yeah, if there's a a need for the child while they're living in that home. Is there any other questions? Um, when you said oh. <laughs> your future housing development is going to cost millions, so um, the government is going to give you those millions or. Is it going to it be? Would pro I would probably uh, think of. Or is it going to be slowly, phases and yes, little, a slow uh, process as usual? Here and there. So um, we still got some time here, and I want to introduce our CRW developer, if uh, he would um, stand up, Jason Ocasta. Hey, Bonjour. Thank you for coming out today. I'm uh, grateful that our uh, developer got to come out here today. His company is based in Winnipeg, Manitoba, off of uh, East Side Portage. Uh, 3111, I believe, is the address for Portage mm -hmm. Avenue. We bought his system. I believe it had to be at least over... Um, eight years, maybe five years ago. And the system is built into a computer. A computer receives so much updates and uh, updates that our uh, housing manager has um, difficulty uh, understanding, but he still manages to get around it and give our guy a call and ask him what the new update was about. Uh, it's very, uh, he's very great in communication. If you want, if you don't want, if you don't want somebody that's gonna be, you're gonna be leaving a phone call and say, okay, call me back, I'm trying to get an update here. I'm trying to uh, get a suggestion on what we can include in our program. He's our main guy that answers our calls right away. And Next question. I have a question for Jason. I'm from Martin Falls. I think we've met. Um, do you travel to communities to assist with this program? Or just by phone? Hi. Uh, yes, we do have the ability to <coughs> travel to First Nations uh, for our training. Um, we do offer the training in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, but if uh, you aren't able to make it out, we do have the ability to go out to First Nations and do the training as well. That should have uh, answered your question. Oh, uh, in terms of av availability and everything, uh, we can always set something up as well when you're available or uh, uh, when we have some time as well. Oh, uh, in terms of uh, online and phone training, uh, we do offer uh, online training. We uh, do offer phone training. We just find face-to-face uh, -face training does uh, uh, offer the best in terms of uh, um, uh, retaining that sort of information and showing everybody in terms of how the system uses. So we do offer both. If uh, travel is uh, improbable, we do offer that as well. If there's actually one thing I want to add and sort of take away from all of this as well is that uh, no matter which sort of software or a thing that uh, you choose to use for your First Nations, uh, one thing that I think everyone needs to know is that uh, the amount of work that goes into your database and your software is completely dependent on the amount of uh, information that you get. Everyone sees the software stuff and they, they see, wow, it's really cool, it's really re great to use. But uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that there's a lot of work that needs to be put into this on the First Nations part as well. Uh, if you're not willing to put in the time and the effort to put in the info, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. So um, 
with all of with all databases that come into uh, your housing software, if you have the time and you have the uh, effort to put into it, you're going to get great results no matter what. Hey, which? And the other thing, too, when it comes to databases, especially if we start seeing youth in the, within the community, is to start introducing them into app development, and they can, we will have another Jason on the line, in training kind of deal. So, yeah, I'm hoping that we can move towards app development for our youth. Any more questions or comments? Awesome. Okay, the miigwech, Curtis. So if you guys you. have any other questions for any other uh, towards Sheila Kelly of Anogaming. <laughs> Pauline, I have Lorraine on my mind for some reason, I don't know why. Any other questions? Okay, how miigwech. I have some gifts here before you go, Curtis. On behalf of the First Nation Housing Conference Working Group, miigwech. <laughs> and I have.